Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft Season 5, and I'm standing here next to a sign. What does it say? Slash clear is not for you or me. It's not the same as transparency. Someone's been doing some rhyming, I tell ya. Someone's been making a shop over there. Looks like that's the place to go to get some building done. And uh, behind me, that looks like a bookshelf. I love this. This is looking super cool, unfortunately. Coming soon, perception check, games, poems, and advice. Perception check. I like the sound of that a lot. Perception is an important thing in life. Think about it. How you perceive things tell you what you think they are. Or maybe that's too much. Let's let's not go there. Let's let's get into Minecraft. Hi, what's this wonderful room? Uh, this is the Beacon Shop by Impulse. I've I've been here before. Confession. And this is the place where you put in your request. Basically, you can hire a beacon, which is pretty cool. I think this is where you pick it up. Look at these beacons and iron blocks. Pretty fantastic, but we have a stack of beacon box. And, of course, let, let's let's talk about where we are. If you haven't seen this place before, then you must be brand new to Hermitcraft because this is our beautiful build made by Mr. Good Times of Scar, the community area where all the shops are. And I'm walking around just checking out what's going on. And I wanted to start off by saying thanks for all the feedback on the previous episode. Do you know what? I can be a little bit negative in my head sometimes. I got interrupted when I was recording. I started to feel like things weren't going so good, but the feedback on that episode was just wonderful. So you really picked me up, <laughs> and uh, I'm just dead excited to record again today because we're going to be having so much fun. This is Python's boom shop, by the way. Uh, you can hire Python to get you some TNT or to blow stuff up for you. And over here, there's uh, this orders book, and I, I was being nosy. I had a look in here, and Ravine Creation... That sounds really interesting, you know. Good way to create a ravine is to use some TNT. I mean, you don't want to mine it all yourself, do you? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> there is a reason we're in this area. We're not actually here to use any of the shops. This is Iskow's shop over here, I believe. It doesn't have, like, a, a sign with letters or, like, a name up here. So you can be like, aha, it's this shop. It's just, oh, there's a hole in the pathway. Goodness me, who designed this? It's not derp proof. It needs to be dirt proof. Uh, there's like a little hallway in here with a bunch of heads. It's kind of kind of a little bit on the morbid side, you know what I mean? I love that guardian head though. That looks super cool. So glad we added the heads this season. They bring so much life to the server, you know. The more details, the better. That's what I think about this game. Anyway, let's pop over to our shop. That's why we're here. We have a customer, peeps. Our first ever customer. And you won't believe this. You won't believe this. It's the one person I thought we weren't going to be a customer this season. Good times of Scar. Okay, because we built Scar a giant sorting system. And I thought, well, that's one customer we won't have. But no, Scar needs our services again. And I'll tell you what, I'm happy to be a, be a, a helping hand on this server and, and build a storage system. So, are the lights going to go off? I tried to jump over the pressure plates. Oh, do you know what? I've got good old Optifine on at the moment. And that means it's not quite as laggy, which is fantastic. The, the, the server's been optimized and all of that. So, sugarcane storage, good times of Scar. Let's check out this book. Oh, it's just the name. Well, it's a good thing that I watched his video. Apparently, I wasn't paying that much attention because I thought there were instructions in here. In fact, why would I leave that there? Let's take that with us. That could be a memento in our base. We're going to rename that with the episode number and put it in the uh, mementos area, which I really need to start, don't I? I need to start. We need to fly over to Scar's area, and I can show you what exactly is going on. But, of course, before we leave, we've got to do a lap of this beautiful, beautiful area. If ever you need inspiration, oh, this is the place to go to, I tell you. I've already made one confession this episode. I've got to make the same confession again. When I was watching Scar's episode, I wasn't giving it the fullest of attention because when I watch videos, um, I'm also kind of like playing Minecraft as well most of the time. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure some of you do that as well. This looks like the sugarcane farm, as evidence of by the sugarcane I can see on the inside. And I love the theme of this build. Man, this is a very exciting place on the server. I'll tell you what, there is a lot of diversity in this community, you go to different places, you see all sorts of different things, like a, like an ice tray. That's kind of ugly. But anyway, I want to take another approach at this building. It's looking pretty superb. I think the roof might not be finished yet, and that might be a good place for us to land. Also, there's a lack of, like, <laughs> streets or area at the bottom here. That's awesome. I love it. So, confession, confession. I was watching Scar's video. I'm not 100% sure where this collection system is supposed to go, but I think it's going to be really straightforward. We're going to go to the bottom of this, and we're going to be like, oh, there it is. You know what I mean? It's going to be no big deal. Let's drop in here. Oh, okay. So, this is kind of fancy. We just built one of these last episode. Now, there's another design to check out. Looks like it's using slime blocks to push the sugar cane into the middle. Aha, aha. And then there's a big water collection thing at the bottom. I might get stuck in there if I drop down, but let's just give it a try anyway. There's some water to break our fall, and then there's just a single 
hopper. And that's where it must get collected. So now I need to get... This was a really bad idea. I need to get out of here. Now let's do some magic tricks. Right, let's throw an ender pearl. Let's walk backwards, press spacebar, and up we go like that. And oh, try and avoid colliding with something. <laughs> we did actually hit the side of that. So we want to find that hopper and what's underneath it. And then we've got to build a sorting system. Not going to be like this. In fact, it's not even going to be a sorting system. I don't know why I said that. It's going to be a storage system. We're going to store the sugar cane. We're not going to sort anything. And it's going to be like the bulk storage that we did in our base for all the items that we have on one side, like stone and cobble. Pretty much that. It's going to compact the items into the uh, shulker box and it looks like we have a ton of space here to work with which I'm thankful about and that's definitely the bottom of the farm and that is a redonkulous amount of sugarcane that's actually a lot more than I've got because I haven't even set up my farm to automatically activate or even activated it since the last episode I think but there you go I'm gonna go do a supply run now I'm gonna scratch my noggin we're gonna build this system and when I come back it's gonna be finished I'm gonna go look at that it's amazing and then we're gonna get on with something else Look at that! It's amazing, as I said I would say. This thing's been built. It's actually a one-wide tileable design, so it looks a little bit odd here, but uh, it lines up nicely with the ground. You can see the chest is level with the player. These are where the filled boxes go, and the empty ones go up the top here. So Scar left me a whole bunch of these shulker boxes, and I dyed them lime green, and I renamed them as well. And I actually want to show you this in action. So I've got a full one over here. And what we're going to do is put a whole bunch of sugarcane back in there. So it's only got room for a little bit more at the moment. I'll give you a quick demonstration of this thing in action. Let's pick that one up. And then let's chuck some sugarcane in at the top. Now it is a little bit slow because the sugarcane will fill up that box very quickly. Then it will back up a little bit here. And it takes a moment for the comparator signal strength to go up. But then the thing will activate and it will install a new shulker box. Excellent. That one is empty. And the filled one has gone into the chest down below. It's pretty fantastic. So Scar, I hope you're happy with it. That'll sort all of your sugar cane into these shulker boxes. So from one sugar cane farm to another. I've got some work to do finishing this thing off, right? If you remember last episode, I was basically getting interrupted a lot when recording. And that can really disrupt your flow, your thought pattern and thinking about all the things that you need to do to get a farm to work. Now, I've just harvested this, and I feel like I missed the opportunity to show you it in action. Aha, now here is another problem. There is so much sugarcane coming out of this thing that the way that I've set up the minecast, which is different from Nembom's design, means that sugarcane gets left behind because the minecart actually fills up. So when it goes one way, loads of the sugarcane has been hit in this direction and it picks it all up. But the bits that land on the leaves, and apparently there's some over there as well, the bits that land on the leaves get knocked back and the minecart goes around full. So the minecart needs to do a couple of laps because it sounds like we're missing a lot of this stuff actually. Check it out, over a couple of stacks there and we've got something going on at the end here. We've got sugarcane there. We've got sugarcane that's managed to make its way into that bit, I guess... Is that? That is sugarcane. It looked like wheat for a second. I was getting all sorts of confused. Uh, anyway, so when I was doing the redstone, I kept coming up with solutions and running into problems. What you're looking at here is actually after a couple of redesigns of what was going on here. My idea was to create a big old delay and then it would activate. This delay right here is not long enough for the sugarcane uh, or the, sorry, the slime block flying machine I guess to come all the way back over to this end and then set this thing off. The problem was that I needed a falling edge detector because of course this is just going to turn it on pretty much straight away and it's a very pointless circuit. But the thing is we can actually have it go straight away because it will still be picking up sugarcane. I think the solution to this is going to be quite simple but this time I'm going to build it first so I can go here is how it works rather than explaining a load of nonsense that doesn't work right. And also, this thing is sending the items up there. There are a couple of ice streams around the back of this that I don't think I showed either. So here's where it all gets collected. There's another ice stream up there, and that comes from the gunpowder farm, which we didn't see at all last time because I cut it out. You know, I got into this kind of flow of rushing to record stuff, and I was trying to do a lot and explain a lot. And when I was watching it back, I was like, man, we've just spent too long in this area, you know. 
and I believe where we want to go is directly down here. It is! Bam! We fall all the way down into this monster spawner area right here. This is where we got the skeleton for our creeper farm, by the way, and this thing has been working around the clock. Whenever I have my camera account on, I sneak over here and have a look, and I always see creepers spawning. It is a very efficient design, and as we talk about it, creepers are falling down here. They're getting shot by skeletons, so we're still producing records. As you can see, though... Um, this thing has been altered, there's a whole bunch of redstone going on, and over here I've also got sand on top of all of these fence posts, so there are less arrows in the world, which is very important, that was causing a bit of a problem. Now at the moment, all of the records are going to get trashed, unfortunately, the items are going to flow through here, all the way across to an item filter, which is going to take out the gunpowder, and set it in this direction. Fun fact for you, this thing barely fit anywhere because it is built in and amongst the bedrock, which I think is kind of cool. So that'll filter out the gunpowder just about, and then the records go over here, they get dispensed into lava. Not very interesting, I know. Eventually we'll sort them or do something with them. I've also already got um, a couple of chests over here full of stuff, but I haven't created a proper system for that, and we might as well take this and chuck it into that thing over there. So this thing goes directly upwards and then there's like an ice stream. It actually like weaves between two mob spawners which is kind of cool and then it goes to storage. So that's what we've done down here. That's how we got the gunpowder up top. I'm going to go up there, fix up that sugar cane so we can say right we're done here now and we can decorate the last of the farm and be done with this project. I believe I can say that we are finished here. We've got four different redstone circuits to do the job. We're going to start off with the simplest one, which is simply this redstone wire right here. So when we activate the farm, we activate the flying machine. This redstone wire is going to send the minecart hopper that will be sitting on top of this rail out to pick up the sugar cane. Now it might be a little bit faster than the machine and not actually pick a lot up, but when it gets to the back it's going to come back up and pick loads of it. And that leads us to our second circuit. This is a falling edge detector and if that sounds complicated, I'm going to make it nice and simple to understand. So this is our input, the comparator. What it's going to do is detect when the minecart hopper is unloading its sugar cane and that is going through the hopper and around into this elevator, okay? So we can hit this lever and we can simulate that this is on and that sugar cane is unloading. Now thanks to this little bit of redstone right here, some redstone wire, a comparator, a repeater and a redstone torch back there, it will create a pulse when the comparator turns off, which we can simulate by turning off this lever. So we do that and then that thing gets powered, right? So after it's done one trip, it's going to go out again. And if there's more sugar cane to pick up, it's going to pick it up and then it's going to bring it back and the same thing is going to happen again. And eventually it'll go up there, there'll be no sugar cane to pick up and then this thing won't get activated, which is pretty fantastic. And you might point out that potentially the sugar cane could despawn in the farm if it takes a long time to unload here. That is something that, I don't know, we'll just have to leave for now. So I found what appears to be a problem, but maybe actually isn't, okay? We have a T flip-flop over here. This is circuit number three. There's some quirkiness here that I want to talk about. And this is to turn on and off circuit number four, which is a classic EFO hopper clock. And that's so we can automate the activation of this farm, which we'll need in the beginning to build up a healthy supply of sugarcane. So the problem here is that when we use the T flip-flop to lock this thing off, it actually leaves this redstone signal on. So the minecart hopper here is going to go back and forth and up there it seems to be okay with the flying machine but it is sending up an active signal which might not be uh, the best thing to do. I'm going to leave this alone and not mention it again. If ever it's a problem I'll fix it off camera. So let's go and talk about the quirkiness of this thing right here. This is a clever little T flip flop design. Okay so we can send a one tick pulse into a sticky piston which will make it act like a T flip flop so it'll only push or extend rather than push and extend right now when you lower this by one block it doesn't actually work which is kind of funny I find because when you mirror that design this thing needs to be higher so if we do that you can see it gets activated twice If we come over here and do the mirror of the design that works except it's the other way around um, it has the same problem except for some reason it isn't actually extending it at all it's because this is the wrong way around so when this is flipped and the redstone block and sticky piston are down where those blocks are, it works, but the other way around, it doesn't. It has to be one block higher. And I find that kind of quirkiness very interesting. As you'll see here, it works like that. So when I originally built this, it was quite high up. 
in this space and I thought now nah, it's a little bit high let's flip it around and then I found that quirkiness which I wanted to share with you. The sugarcane farm is now finished I can proudly say it finito 100% everything's done everything's working but I had to make some adjustments to the redstone I've also done the rest of the aesthetics down there we'll go back and check it out at the end of the episode because you're probably sick of that by now it's been a bit of a two-parter and I did say we'd make some firework rockets stations around the place as well because it is a firework rocket factory technically so we'll have to do that in a moment as well I want to show you some of the things we've done on our streams so I had a little job over here that I just forgot about this place now has a roof however I'm short of a couple of uh, sandstone blocks as you can see we'll get that sorted out then over here you can see there's a bit of a pit a bit of an abyss and below it some endermites because you can see the purple particle effects this was a fantastic idea that happened rather spontaneously we were talking about what to put down there the idea of blazes came to be and as I ender pearled out of there endermites spawned so there is actually glass here then there's some black concrete powder around the outside and the endermites have been renamed so they don't despawn and I love the purple effect it really suits the enchanting and then we went through like three or four stacks of pearls and we weren't able to get any more so there is only two of them unfortunately I think I'll leave it that way because I'm never really going to use that enchanting table in fact the gear that we're wearing right here and the tools I don't think any of them are broken the entire season which is pretty fantastic so on that stream where we did the endermites we went around doing some little errands speaking of errands this was one of them we got to finish this roof this has been like this for ages and uh, I figured, hey, finish the ring of those blocks, then put in some iron blocks, right? Because it's iron down below. And that is another little thing done. We're, we're, we're finishing lots of loose ends at the moment. Here's another loose end. We've got this minecart elevator that goes up and down between the floors. If we go to the top floor, you can see we started work on this right here. The, the path at the bottom, fantastic. There shouldn't be any torches, though. That's one of our rules. No torches for permanent lighting. And wow, it's really dark and dim around here, isn't it? And that is a quirky lighting glitch. And that's because the light level is zero there, right? We learned this. We did learn this. So some light down below is, is giving that a strange effect. I'm not really happy with this corridor. I like these things on the wall here. But then this lava at the end just doesn't really fit in, in my opinion. So what I'd like for us to start doing here is a little bit of building, finish up this corridor, and then we can look at the bottom of the elevator as well. Hmm, nine paintings exactly. Well, we'll take them. Um, through here, you can see I've added a roof. We can get rid of these temporary torches now because we've got redstone lamps up there. The lighting, the look of this, very nice. To make this bit over here work, we need something to mirror it on the other side. I was thinking, actually, we'll end up putting a little rocket station here. The lava, though, mm, not too keen on it. However, it looks slightly better now that this is all filled in. So I was going to leave it up to you guys to post some suggestions. Now, if we put some blocks here temporarily, what I originally was going to put in here was a painting of the wither, which you can get a 2x2 two two one. We might actually see that right now. Or not, because it's probably going to be a pain in the backside, right? How long can I keep talking for? Before the peeps get annoyed. That you saw it. I was too fast. You saw the wither. That would have been so nice if it were a free by free. So I got a suggestion. Hmm, four of them in a row the same. To make these all one by ones. And the fact that so many of them are repeated. I don't think is very nice. But do you think that would look okay? Ah, it's a bit janky to me. A little bit janky. We've got some repeats. So maybe if those were to go away. I don't know. I'll await your feedback and I'll, I'll see how it settles. At the moment, I think the lava is probably nicer than that. But if we go down below, I can show you the rest of the elevator system. Um, so it can bring us down to this floor and then it will go further down. And we started doing a little bit of work here, bringing it through from this room. And that's what I want to do next. I want to finish up this little bit. So some rather simple decisions were made here. We are basically going to mirror what we've done on the floor above and I don't know if ever that was intentional because I started work on this during a live stream and then when I came back to it it sort of just screamed at me that this was very similar to how we had done things up above now one of the problems with this whole project is that there was it doesn't really have a name and that's the problem but where we saw the iron golems earlier we filled in the roof the bottom of the water that they're standing on is this bit here that's why the roof is so low down at this point is because 
that's in the way but luckily we've been able to squeeze everything in at just the right height so that's going to be the ceiling we'll have to tidy this bit up here it's going to be relatively straightforward but we need to color code this because as I go upwards you'll see there's lots of orange so if we go up to this floor you can see the theme that we've just been replicating now why didn't that put me out on the floor that time it did and that's the room that I was talking about with the iron golems so back to this thing, as we go up you'll see that it changes from orange to green and this is to tell us what floor we're on. The problem is that this floor is orange too. Well it's orange and grey I guess you could say and I think this dark grey will have to be the colour of the tunnel. So we're going to turn this concrete powder into concrete blocks and we're going to put that around the edges here. We're going to install some minecarts so you'll be able to see the transition from orange to the next color and that lets you know that you're on the next floor which is a pretty clever system this has worked out pretty well it's the exact right height as the one above is sort of nested in the ground like that as well I think we want to hide that minecart which we can do also I made the ladder face towards us so every now and then I change them from trapdoors to ladders so you can hold shift and maybe uh, you know look up to go upwards and click on a minecart or go down again what do we want to put on the sides here? Let's put these blocks in. How do those look? Yep, I'd say almost, almost. I reckon we want something like that actually. Yeah, there we go, that's nice. You may not be able to hear it right now, but I can hear endermites. And I'm thinking that they are actually just above us. So if we think about it, we've got that floor there, then this one, and in this corner is where the enchanting table is, and then that enchanting table probably goes down a few blocks. So they're sort of that distance from us, but I'm pretty sure I can hear an endermite, and I've left this place and come back again, and I can still hear it, so I'm going to guess it's the ones from up above. Uh, but anyway, I've been getting ready to do the, well, I say ready, I've actually done all the firework crafting and dropping off and I'm going to show you that in a second uh, but we are out of gunpowder and I really should have set this up earlier because that farm has been running around the clock and those drops have just been wasted for the longest time but we do have a plentiful amount of sugarcane right here so this ain't going to be a problem but uh, it's just encouraging me to do some more AFKing on the server you know so we can get some more gunpowder so on this floor I'm yet to find a permanent home for these firework rockets. I considered using a shulker box but I think the dropper texture is a lot nicer. So we're going to store them in there plus 9 stacks in one little thing is a lot more reasonable than a full shulker box. Not that you'd have to fill it the whole way but you know what I'm like. So this area back here just hasn't been decorated yet and it will probably just go on the wall inside this space. Then on the opposite side we haven't even touched that yet. However we tidied up the elevator just above it and that's how actually done all the way up to there. And this is probably going to be the last floor for this elevator maybe there'll be something underneath it as well as I don't know what we're going to do down here and how that bit is going to work out so that's kind of temporary on this floor on the floor next above I decided not to put it in the corner but actually to move it into the center so on the opposite side there's also one of these over here and the idea is if ever you're really short you shouldn't be too far away from one of these to grab them and then you know shoot up into the sky because I know I've got these elevators here but I do actually use the rockets and generally just jump into the middle fly upwards and fly it where I want to go. This thing's still broken. I haven't haven't even tried to fix it because I've given up of all the times that I have. Then on this floor here, uh, we've got it just in the corner right there and it's the same on the opposite side. That's actually a nice little place to put that. And then when it comes to the top area, I haven't even thought about this yet because we're out of rockets, but somewhere here there'll need to be some and I reckon just in the ground would be fine, you know, somewhere in the middle of the grass or maybe closer over to the edge just wherever the center is here we could have it and then again if you're in the area you can just go and grab some rockets and, and get on with your whatever you're doing you know I gotta say it this base is just so inspirational I do actually spend a lot of time just standing here looking around and going wow this has turned out ever so great there's still a long way to go and uh, as we walk through the area here though I wanted to chat with you we're gonna go check out the sugarcane farm down below we're gonna take the elevators down there though and I wanted to talk about Hermit Quest because Hermit Quest Season 2, aka Rifts, has begun. And the viewership was a lot lower than I expected, which is absolutely fine if you're not interested in it. But given the calamity that happened last season, I, I thought I should let you know this season is going to be nothing like that. In fact, it is going to be action-packed. You're going to see so much cool stuff. I would highly, highly recommend you check out the Hermit Quest series and uh, see if it's for you because this season 
heck of a lot better than last time. But anyway, we're here to check out the sugarcane farm. You can find a link to the hermit quest in the description box down below. You can see that I added some glass and uh, I'll let you guys leave a comment. Let me know what you think of that because I'm considering removing it, but I could go either way at this point. I do think, however, there should at least be like one entrance into this place. And you can see what I've done with the walls and the ceiling. So bone mill, or sorry, bone blocks at the back. We got the trim of stone bricks. And then I just decided to throw in some wall next to the clay up here. And I made a bit of a zigzag pattern. This one is slightly staggered. So it's not going on a direct diagonal. It's over to the side a little bit. And that looks very nice. And the whole thing is just a lovely build. I think the sugarcane colours and the grass and the leaves in here very very lush and uh, it's a very nice room isn't it also made some modifications to the redstone we'll never need to make some modifications before because these solve all the problems so first of all we have an observer block to detect the change in the comparator and that works absolutely fine when this thing interacts with that not a problem at all it's going to create a four tick pulse so that activates the thing up the top it activates this and send it on its way as well and I've been watching this thing closely and I've actually been able to see It'll pick up all of the sugarcane over time, <laughs> and what timing it's activating right now. It'll do that without ever losing any of the sugarcane, so none of it will despawn. It'll get back, drop it off, go out again, and get all of the sugarcane, which is just fantastic. So it is a working system, and back here you may notice there's some bone blocks up there. I tidied it up, so I added some more leaves and then put bone blocks behind it. So on this side, it looks pretty decent, I think. But the opposite side looks a little bit different. Oh, there we go. Pro skills parkouring over the flying machine. So over here, there's less leaves overall. And I think what I'll end up doing is just ripping out those bone blocks, putting in some more leaves, and then putting them back behind those ones because it looks a little bit odd. But that's just a job for a live stream. You know, we do lots of odds and sods on the live stream, as you, you can probably tell from the videos when I show you all the things that we've done. Oh, and that's the sugarcane farm done, peeps. We're, we're not going to need to do anything over here again. Well, with exception to what I just said. Now, here's something. When I want to jump off this floor and go up into the sky, I double tap jump, I hit my rocket. Nothing ever happens. Do you want to see, do you want to see this done the daredevil way? You ready for it? Throw an ender pearl up here, deploy the wings, and up we go. That was pretty spectacular. By the way, I let Scar know that his uh, sugarcane storage system is in effect and ready to use. And let's fly around the outside here and get inspired by these custom biomes. I'm looking forward to working on them again, but it won't be today because that's going to be the end of the episode. If you have enjoyed this one, then leave a like as always. Thank you for your support on this series. It really has been tremendous. And I'm looking forward to the next episode of Hermitcraft. So ciao for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.